Hello YouTube and welcome to this very different Unity 3D tutorial. In this tutorial, it's not a Unity 3D tutorial at all, it's a YouTube tutorial. Many of you know I do a lot of Unity 3D game making tutorials, but a lot of users and a personal friend of mine has asked um, if I can do a 3DS Max tutorial so that people who do game making and stuff can get into it so it's really good. Um, so 3DS Max is a 3D modeling program which most professionals use. Um, it is quite complex, but when you get it down, it is actually quite easy to use as well. In, and it's like, the further you use it, the further you can go and everything. There have been some really, really good models in it. And so I'm using um, 3DS Max 2011 64-bit. Um, you can use any version, it should all work compatible with this tutorial. This is first going to be a basic tutorial, of the overview of it. And then we later we're going to go into modeling and texturing and animation. So 3ds Max is basically one of the the best 3D modeling programs out there. Um, I got it free because I'm a student, so I can get it for free. And um, there are other means of course you can get it, but yeah. So let's get started. As soon as you see, you'll see these four windows here. Um, this grid here is your potential starting grid. You've got your scroll wheel to move in and out. And if you hold Alt and press the scroll wheel in, you can rotate it like so. You have your little mini cube up here which you can rotate round to. So you click the front, it goes to the front. Click the top, it goes to the top. And click the house, and it comes to the house view. You've also got the little, if you go here, zoom in, you've got the two arrows as well which rotate it upside down and all the way. So you've got that. Um, you've got this little axis thingy down here which tells you which way you are facing. So like you've got your X axis which goes that way, so if I turn this way the X axis now faces us. Z axis is up and down, and Y is that way. So it is really, it, it's a lot of things. But if you can see in these windows here, it says perspective. And that's the view of what you're looking at it. So if you had a row of cylinders, the cylinder would gradually get smaller as it goes. If you, mine actually glitches out for some strange reason, my computer, I can't click that. Usually you can click that and choose which side you want it to be. Um, but I just used the cube here, so front view, and then you've got the house view. So you can see it. Um, there it is. But then you've got four of these grids. One's for your front, top, left, and then your perspective view. You can change each one of these to whatever you like. So front, but I want the perspective, you press left, press L, you've got your sort of keys. So that's all good. Um, so now that you've got four of these grids, you can set whatever you like. If you go in between, you see these lines, you can drag them as well and resize it to whatever shape you want. And if you mess up, just right click in the middle, reset layout, and it's fixed it. Um, if you want a window to be full screen, you press this little button down here where it's like, it's like a square going into a bigger square and it will full screen it. The keyboard for, shortcut for that is Alt and W. So click whichever one you want and Alt W. You can tell which views um, active because of the yellow or bronzy border around it. So if I want the top view active, Alt W. I want this one, Alt W. And you can still use it the exact same as you can see. So it's really, really helpful. So let's move on to something else. This panel down here where's the animation scroll is the animation scroll bar. So you do your animation, which we'll go into another time. You don't need to worry about that. You've got your axis is here, so this tells you what X, Y, and Z values are. So if you mess a cube, you want to do it like to the millimeter or something, you can use that to code it. Um, well, type it in. You got the lock and the two keys here. You don't need to worry about them. Don't worry about any of these here. The only ones you want to worry about is that full screen toggle one, and then this one, which basically sets it so the all the view, um, all the zooms are the same. So back up to the top, um, as you can see I've got a toolbar across top, file view, your toolbar may be on one line, it's because I have real flow installed, you don't need to worry about that, that's something totally different. So we've got that. Below this you've got your main toolbar, you don't need to worry about half of these, the only one you need to worry about is this one here, which is select objects, your movement one, which you can use to select and move objects, your rotation and your scale, that's all you need to worry about for now. So there's your three basic tools, you don't even have to worry about that one. Movement, Rotate and Scale. If you're used to Unity, you're already fond of them. So it's good. Now to the side, we've got this big toolbar here with loads of boxes. I know it looks complex at the moment, but stick with it, you'll be modelling in no time. So we've got this. Now what do we want to do? 
well what we could do is if we click this little button up here what says create it's like a little star thing click it and you get this box here so as you can see you've got some basic objects here you've got a box you've got a sphere you've got a cylinder you've got a torus teapot cone you've got loads so what you can do is if you just click one of them whichever one you want and you can go to here so if we click in one place then click and drag we've got that and then as soon as you let go that's your x and y set so if i want it that big let go then you drag it up to set your z axis so there's a little cube so now if we rotate around it you've just made your first cube in 3ds max congratulations so we've got the width here so we want to change it we'll change it to 40 40 by 30 so we've got a rectangular cubey thing yeah so if we go up here and click this box down here where it's a standard primitives you've got a lot more ones so you've got like doors you've got pivots you've got particles um you got prisms so you got like drag it out there you go look you got a real star thing um shortcut keys to get rid and delete are the same so control z control x control v delete and all that it's all the same for copy paste and stuff so i'm just going to leave it there for now so what we're going to do is if we go to this one here modify that's basically the properties of your box so if you click that as you can see you've got your box and at the moment all you've got is a box because that's all you've put on so um we've got the length and stuff again so what we can do is if we click modifier list here you've got a big long list of different modifiers you can use a lot of these are quite good and i haven't even used them all i don't even know what half of them do but i do know quite a few of them so if we go down here or press e for that we can go to edit edit ones you've got editable mesh normals patch and poly i don't know what them all do but click editable edit to edit poly and then you'll get the you've got even more settings so um it looks more complex but look for the what panel what says selection and undo it you've got five boxes inside you've got vertex edge border polygon and element so if we just click vertex as you can see nothing really happens but if we zoom into a corner as you can see we now have a blue dot so if we select it you see we've got the scale tool so if we move to the move tool and if you click the zoom extents button here which i told you about earlier you'll get to see it all perfectly but now if we drag this this way as you can see it moves it and bends it you can bend the corners so already anyone who's used unity you can see why this is better than unity already see so it's really really good so we've got that so if we just edit undo that put it back to normal because we want our box back there we go um, so what you've got is the next one we've got edge tool so if we select one of the straight lines so this one here say we can drag this one out as you can see we're now doing it rectangular hey it looks like a little ah uh, sand crawler off Star Wars yeah so if we put that back and for that we won't worry about the rest but the one you want to do look for is polygon so if we click that and click one of the edges boom we now select it so we can drag it up and down drag it sideways drag it back down again so it makes it look really really cool so you can fold it however you like so with basic shapes so far it's looking quite good so far well not actually but you're learning so it is good we are getting there but what about if you want it to make it smaller let's click a scale tool it does look a bit different so you can drag it by each of these points here so if i want the z axis just click it but say i want the z and x axis at the same time as you can see you've got through two triangles the ones here and then the one in the middle so if we click these two here and drag it it'll do it by them two axes and if you do it by these two here these two and then you do it by the bottom two you do it by the bottom two but if you want to do all three you click the middle one and drag it and it'll do it scale to scale so that's it we've got a basic thing so if we delete that and we'll go back to our shapes list let's see so let's add the box again and we'll just drag it out say that big a bit small and we'll say 70 by 70 but we'll only make it 10 high like so um, if we go back to properties we want to change the color because it's a bit horrible so we just click the color we'll do texturing next tutorial if you more people want this click the dark blue one yeah that'll do so we've got a dark blue one looks okay so if we click it and right click uh, my computer always does that um, we have more options 
which is, yeah. So if we click clone here, and what do we want? A copy is copying it, and then you can change it, and the other one doesn't change. If you, if you want something like a fence row, so if you change one, they all change, click instance. But we're just going to stick with copy. We'll leave it as stair 2, and we'll click OK. So what we're going to do is just go to the side view here and drag it up. Like I said, let's just place it roughly about there. And what we'll do is we'll get the width and the length and we'll say 50 by 50, like so. So we've got like a little box thing. And what we're going to do is do it again. So clone, up, drag it up, place it there, and we'll say 30, 30. So you see we've got like a little pyramid thing going on there. So it looks okay. So then what we're going to do is go back again and click cylinder. This is just basically showing you how to use the tools. So if we just drag it in here, put it down. So it's cylinder is different. You click and drag, it'll do the size, and then you go up or down. So I'm going to do that and just put it down a little bit. Then I'm going to scale it massively up. Then I'm going to go to this view, scale it down a bit, make it thinner, and drag it up again. So now we have a weird little pole thing. I don't know what it is. I really don't. But yeah, so you've got a basic thing. To save it, Control S, standard, save it wherever you want it. So it'll be really helpful. So that's a basic tutorial cover up with it. The cylinder also has the same tools. But I hope you enjoyed it. If you want another tutorial, please tell me about it. I'll make another one. If not, don't worry about it. It's just a teaser. But yeah, so I hope this begins you in the path of 3DS Max. Um, I've been using it for nearly two years now and I absolutely love the program. It is an amazing program. So thanks for watching and like this, like this video. See you next time.